Hey everybody, it's Amanda again, and it's time for the August 2020 Q&A for Patreon. And I'm kind of excited because we have some really great questions. I'm glad I sent that little message out to everybody because you guys, you alls, did a great job. You and uh, and sent in some really great questions. So let me move over to my other window here. Got three windows going on. And that one's mine. That one's not the first one. Okay. First one is from Rebecca. What would you say was the biggest limitation we stepped into by becoming humans on Earth? And I'm going to invite you, as I always do, take a deep breath and just let everything go that you've been dealing with. Like, just check in and make sure you got everything relaxed because every time I do that, I realize I have been tense. So, all right, the biggest limitation. They're saying the limitation is also the purpose. The limitation is cutting ourselves off from knowing who we really are. So knowing that we're part of the all and that we are love and that we are not restricted in any way um, in our beingness. But we come here to experience that. We come here to experience um, pretending to be separate. <laughs> I'm asking why we um, would want to do that, why we would want to pretend to be separate. like it's like it's fun for us to be who we are and, um, like be the light and the love to once we're out of this experience that we can look back on the experience and say even though we didn't know who we really were look at all the examples of it that we gave in in this life in this everyday existence um, where we cared about people and we worked together with people um, yeah. it's like it's exciting and fun to us to see how much of our true selves come through even when we don't even when we've sealed ourselves off like we've put this bubble over us like don't remember just go in and pretend like you're doing this little job and you're here with your family and that's all the person that you are but to see how the real you expresses in that situation so that seems like it would be really interesting for you for all of us to look at our lives look back on our lives now that we know who we are and, and look back and see, like, how did that express all this time before we even knew, before we knew the extent of what we know now about who we are. Cool. I hope that was good enough answer. Um, this is Martin's follow-up to the question from last month. Um, I don't remember the exact thing, but okay, I'm just going to read this. Um, if everything is consciousness or mind, then how does consciousness first appear? Um, it's another origin story. Perhaps consciousness emerges from the fact that nothing cannot not exist, and a consciousness of its nothingness necessarily appears alongside. Okay, so... If it's all consciousness, how does it first appear? What's, what's the origin of consciousness? 
this is the big question everybody wants to know always. I remember wondering about this when I was little, the concept of God, you know, like God created us. Well, who created God? <laughs> like, that's not, that's not a good enough answer for me. So these are the things that get you kicked out of Sunday school. Not speaking from experience, just speaking from my father's experience. Um, all right, so what, what's the origin of the consciousness or the energy consciousness that exists? They're saying, okay, we know it's hard for you to imagine this because your life is experienced in start point, you know, middle point or present moment and the end point where you leave your physical existence. But if you could just try to fathom the idea of there isn't a time, there isn't a beginning and there isn't an end. It is existence. They're showing me an image that's, and, it, and the image doesn't make sense to me because again, it's like a 3D representation. Ah, maybe that's why. It's a 3D representation of, of the reality, which we can only experience the 3D representation. So they're showing me like the beam of a flashlight, you know, how you've got the starting point and then it, um, it's really this is the source of the light is the flashlight and then it, as it goes out the beam widens right and it's not as bright as it goes out they're showing me an image like that only it's not a flashlight it's it's source but it doesn't end it just that point of the brightest light just is like it just keeps replicating well, that's, that's not even the right way to say it it's not doing anything. It just, it's existence. It just is. And it just will keep. Again, I'm trying to explain this in terms of time. It just keeps existing. And every time you can think of, it just keeps, it just is. It's just always there. It's always there. It's always going to be there. It doesn't matter how far you go back. It's infinite. And it's infinite the other way. Um, there's no way to describe it other than it, it is, it doesn't begin and it doesn't end. But does that, so that since they gave me the flashlight analogy, I'm asking if it has confinements because it looks, you know, the flashlight beam exists in the beam but it doesn't exist outside of the beam, so. It can choose, source can choose other existences of itself. But for the purpose of this explanation, they were showing me the one that we exist in. It's like turning, turning your focus. It's like focusing the beam on different things. This is the thing it's focusing on now, this experience. Or I guess us as source. It's what we're experiencing now is this earth life, this discussion we're having and all the things that we can think of having to do with that are part of that one beam of exploration, I guess. Creation and exploration and fun. Like, like it's interesting and fun to explore different things and this is the thing that we're in exploring right now as pieces of source. And it just, the concept of we can't 
we can't understand something that doesn't begin or end because that is not how we exist here. That is not how our brains work. <laughs> and, and it's not supposed to. Our brains aren't supposed to work that way because we have to. We're here for a purpose to experience in this way. And so we can't not experience in this way. I mean, we can have a concept of it, but the true integration of it is not what we're trying to experience in this, whatever you want to call it, dimension, this life. Let me know what you think about that. I don't know. It is hard. It is a hard concept for me to, to imagine infinite. Okay, and this is my question. What can we do to block the feeling of the collective when it feels very negative or oppressive? And should we? Um, or is there a purpose to the to feeling the oppressiveness? Um, and I ask this because sometimes I will. Oh, it's eleven eleven. Sometimes I will wake up at 3 a.m. or 2 a.m. or 5 a.m. and I will have just been having a, you know, somewhat nice dream, nothing unusual about it, nothing unpleasant about it. And as soon as I wake up, I get this feeling of oppressiveness or like, just like, uh, something's wrong, something's not good. Um, and it doesn't seem to come from me <laughs> and I don't like it. So, um, so I'm wondering if I can block that. And also, you know, sometimes you have to go into a place you don't necessarily want to go in and it feels very heavy and negative and, you know, I don't feel like I've ever been really good at the, the whole bubble, um, imagery where you like put a bubble of light around yourself or something to protect you. And I just don't. I do have another thing I use now that I think about it. Anyway, let's see what they say. Um, what can we do to block the feeling when it doesn't feel good? And also, is there a purpose to the feeling of not feeling good that we could get some kind of understanding about? They're reminding me of a couple of things. So after my mom died, um, I remember I was at a health club and I was walking the track and I suddenly felt very vulnerable for some reason. Like I kept looking behind me. I kept feeling like somebody was going to come up behind me, you know, and surprise me or something. There was nobody else on the track. Um, but all of a sudden I felt like these two gigantic bodyguards just whoop, dropped down and were walking right behind me. And, uh, and that was a nice feeling because they're big, like big male energies, um, two of them walking right behind me. And then I was able to, you know, feel fine. I don't, I didn't question it at the time. I just thought, well, if that's my imagination, I feel better and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go with that. And I don't remember any other I'm like trying to call them in or anything, but, um, but the other thing is recently, sometimes when I channel, I haven't, I didn't do it today and I haven't done it for, you know, a week or two or maybe a month. I don't know. Anyway, but sometimes I'll imagine, um, I'll call in a couple of guardians sort of, and I generally, I don't like to do that because when you tell yourself you need guardians, you sort of create the energy where you need guardians, if that makes sense. Like you're, you're calling, you're allowing for that energy by saying that you need those things. So I try not to do it too often, but, um, anyway, yeah, I'll have a couple drop in and they're, they're different every time. They're not always the same. And then there's this, um, It's 
like circles that rotate in different directions and it's like a random movement so I don't even have anything to demonstrate but if you had like you know you've got this circle and then you've got another circle that's this way and they're they're all like they're rotating randomly there's like three of them and so sometimes I can't do a bubble but I can do that thing where I see the rings like constantly, it's like they're clearing the energy around me or something. They're constantly rotating and um, I don't know what that is, but that's just, you know, when I asked for a little protection because I don't even remember why I asked for it that one time. That's what I saw. So... is It is... Is it okay for us to do that or is that like I said calling sort of the negative to you when you're you're expecting the negative so you're pro in protecting yourself from the negative it's like you're saying I expect the negative to come around me is that accurate or Well, they're saying you're never really vulnerable to the negative because you are source light and nothing can actually harm you. Nothing can destroy you. You exist. You've always existed. You will always exist as a part of source. And contrary to some beliefs, you may have the appearance or people, beings, may see something that looks like the destruction of light. It isn't. It's a perception. So you don't need protection. What about protection from the oppressive feelings? What's the purpose? Like, what can we learn from having to feel that, ugh, that awful feeling of whether it's the collective or the energies around us? Like, what's the purpose of that? They're saying, do you not feel empowered when you, when you can sense these things? Is it not a little bit thrilling that you, you can sense this? Because it's not something that we learn. It's not something they teach kids in school to sense your surroundings and be able to feel the, the um, how do I even say that? The feeling frequent, the high, the majority feeling frequency of the collective of the whole planet that you're on, or the majority vibration of a room that you walk in. How, how much have you all wanted your special powers? Um, and this is one way to know that you do have these gifts that you've wanted and you have other gifts but this is the easiest one to tap into this is the easiest one to acknowledge because it happens so frequently and it's a play on words they also said frequency 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 -ly. frequent frequency they're playing with the language there. What if we don't like it? Call, call to your guides inside, internally, and say, help me connect to my highest best feeling. Uh, because I know I have tried this when I feel that oppressive thing. I've tried doing it by myself and like, I still feel yucky. I'm thinking of my highest, best, my children are awesome. I love my children. No, I can still feel the yuckiness around it. <laughs> so they're saying you can call to your guides or, you know, the collectives. I ask the Arcturians to help me sometimes, like, help. Help me.
me connect to that feeling. That's interesting. Okay, next question. What sort of major natural earth events can we expect to occur in the next several months to a year? Not calling them natural disasters, natural earth events, because they happen all the time. Next several months to a year, what do we got? Floods, fires. California fires are coming east. Ugh, gross. And north, east and north. At one time, yeah, I was thinking about this this morning, and I, I think it was the first predictions video that I did where I saw the United States and the west and the north were just brown. It's like they had been scorched. And they were just all dry. And I thought maybe it was, that meant drought, but maybe it meant like just recurring fires, fires, fires. And I did see a lot of migration of people. A lot of people moved out of those areas into other areas. Um, they're not talking about that now, but it just reminded me of that. But I do still see California fires, and I see it coming east and north. And I see a bunch of rain for the... Um, south, east, south and east. Of course, I also know that there are two tropical depressions forming down there. And just um, when I saw those two, I, something, I clicked on something on my weather app and it took me to the weather channel, which I'm not a big fan of because they have so many sensationalized headlines, it drives me nuts. Um, but there were two, um, you know, they showed one coming towards the Gulf and one sort of coming over Florida. And they were sort of looked like they were meeting into one. And I um, belong to a Patreon group. It's actually called Crypto Viewing. They do a lot with cryptocurrency. But they have like five, five to seven remote viewers. And they do like a monthly recap of what every remote viewer saw for, for that month. And there's one, I think she's Japanese, I'm not sure she's Japanese, but her name's Hitomi. And she, in hers, she talked about two um, hurricanes uh, merging into one. So I'm a little concerned about, <laughs> a little concerned about our southern coast here in the United States. Um, because she's pretty spot on about her predictions, but we'll see. Um, okay, so that's. I, but I was, I didn't see, I'm not seeing hurricanes. I'm just seeing the rain. It's just like rain, 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 rain in the southeast. And it could extend to the Gulf. I'm not really seeing it in the Gulf. It just feels like, well, I guess it is Florida, Louisiana. Maybe not so much on the East Texas coast. Just a whole lot of rain. Um, what about something's going on in Canada? I'm seeing a lot of water spilling over the top of something. Is that a natural? Disaster, I mean, natural earth event. <laughs> it looks like a waterfall, but like Niagara Falls, like more than that, more than that. It's like so much water coming over something, spilling over something. It doesn't feel like Niagara Falls. It feels like something else. All right, let me just do a world. Well, first of all, is that is that it? Fires and floods? Hail? Tornadoes? 
tornadoes, but not. I'm not feeling any headlines like the biggest tornado we've had in decades or anything like that. Like if we have tornadoes, it'll be same old, same old. More hail for the Midwest, but maybe a little further east than, than the really devastating ones they had recently. I'm, ch I'm trying to check other areas of the world. That's too much. All right, we'll, we'll just go with the United States ones for now. Um, to a year. Say in the middle of the U.S. shake like an earthquake, like maybe an earthquake swarms or something. I've been seeing for years something around St. Louis, but nothing ever happens there. So I don't know what that is. Maybe it's a natural event triggered by some other event that happens. But it feels like in the middle of the U.S. It doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel eminent by any means, so. All right. That's all I can get for now. Okay, Ellen, if there's resistance to going within to find answers, center the self, call on the higher self, how does one move past that in a way that's genuine rather than forcing oneself to do the work? I get that. I hate work. Anything that sounds like work, I don't like. They're talking about just trying to bring joy in as much as you can to try to make everything as fun as you can and it and the things that you need to know will naturally unfold and when they do when something does come up they say just observe rather than um, internalize it don't because they're saying we have a tendency to feel bad when something bad comes up we have to um, look at something we don't like and then we feel bad um, so they're saying try try to stay in joy and fun as much as possible and when something does come up that's a little more <laughs> than you would like to have to handle at one time um, just try to observe it. Maybe, you know, for me, sometimes I have to sit down and like journal it out. Like, why is this triggering me? What has this got to do with? Why am I feeling this all the time? Why does this keep coming back over and over again? Um, and if you have any tools that you like to use, like um, that you've used before that have really served you, I was trying to think of an example. Like tapping, I guess, would be one. If you tapped on it, um, that would feel better than like forcing yourself to sit down and journal and dig up the stuff and, you know, figure it out. Just let it, let it unfold because that's how it works. It will unfold whether you want it to or not. Anything you need to learn will be presented to you. Um, but if you're living your life in an authentic but fun and joyful way, the most fun and, and joyful way that you can make it, 
um, at any given time. And then when something comes up, just try to look at it. And if it's a little more than you can handle, then use one of your tools or one of the tools of any of the spiritual teachers or um, teachers, not good. Guides or examples. Um, you, you can use something like that to help you process it. And then that will be done, but it will, it'll come naturally. You don't have to force it. Good. Cause I hate. <laughs> I try not to say hate. It's not my favorite to have to do the work or whatever. I'm holding this little piece of, I can't even remember what it's called. It's like a rainbow something or other. I think it starts with a B. Anyway, it's my son, my middle son's, and he lent it to me for this channeling. So thanks, Jack. He also gave me his selenite wand. Which is awesome because I've been feeling kind of achy the past few days. Okay. Why are so many light workers getting messages about Trump also being a light worker? If he's a light worker, how can he also coexist with so many problematic behaviors? I already got some stuff on this, but let me see if I don't want that to be my 3D self answering, so. <laughs> They're showing me Trump as being very highly reflective. So I'm taking that to mean he's a mirror. People in power are a mirror for the for the the things that we want cleared but haven't been cleared yet for the collective so okay, first first of all they said every being is of the light even if it doesn't look like it they can get attached to these negative, what they were calling in my QHHT session, negative self-replicating programs. Um, they can get attached to that very egoic, very powerful service to self over service to others. They can attach to that or have it like as a shell around them, but they are still light. All of us are. I mean, there isn't anything that isn't of the light. We're just all here pretending. So, um, so while his 3D self is sort of entangled with his egoic programs and his learned cultural behaviors since, you know, he was a kid, and this is the theme I have gotten over and over again the past two weeks. You know, when we come in, we are this beautiful, shiny light, and then everybody around us says, you know, this is how you need to be, and, and we realize we're vulnerable in this, or we believe we're vulnerable in our 3D bodies from a young age, so we need the people that are taking care of us, that are giving us our food and our ability to have a safe place to sleep and all that their opinions become very important to us and he's no exception and what he learned he learned a certain set of behaviors and he learned that is what you do to please others to please those around you so some of those don't look very nice and some of those look very nice, but they're empty. They don't have any meaning behind them. But he's got his shell of imposed cultural beliefs. And when I say cultural, I don't mean like our culture in the United States. I mean like his microculture of his family, his, his parents grandparents, the people around his dad, even. 
And so in his, his mind is programmed that way. His mind says, this is right. This is the right way to do it because this is how you succeed. Um, doesn't look very good to some of us. Or maybe even a lot of us. I really feel like he's feeling very worn down by his position. He's trying all the usual, you know, what his programming has told him works. But I feel like he's starting to feel real empty about it. A little, not real empty, he's starting to feel a little hollow by it all. Like maybe he doesn't want to play this game anymore. <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. Okay, but I was also getting something earlier about, from a higher perspective, what his role is. And I think they've already said this, this you know, the shiny reflective mirror about the collective. So, he's not only facilitating um, a polarization once we are as a people very polarized very on opposite sides and very angry about it you know we're all processing all that out and he's a facilitator for it so whether you love him or whether you can't stand him um, you know, we've, we're learning, <laughs> how does that make us feel as people? Um, we've got family and direct opposition and you love your family. You love your family members, but you don't understand their position. So it's this, um, it's this processing of how do you reconcile? How can you possibly feel that way to, I really love you. You know, how do you reconcile that? So that's a theme we're working through, and he's facilitating that. He's also facilitating um, how other countries interact with the United States and how we've always felt about our national identity, how other countries feel about the United States. So it's a really big themes. So, you know, if you wanted to look, if you want to look at it from a higher perspective, he's really facilitating our um, coming back to center from, you know, people see that maybe um, they feel that he's a cause of this polarization. I really think any politician, it doesn't matter who it is, any politician, any president, and it seemed like this for decades and decades now, um, We've been very polarized, but he is like super great at this <laughs> polarization, which to our 3D selves makes us like, what? But, um, but from a higher perspective, I mean, we are working through a lot of heavy themes of, um, you know, and I'm not saying he's the cause of all of it, but like racial inequality, racial strife, um, uh, economic, socioeconomic um, problems, like who are the lowest paid, the lowest, the least respected, who are, who are the highest paid and the, you know, get the most benefits. Like we're looking at all of it. How does our money system work? How does our education work? How does our food systems work? How does our medicine work? I mean, everything is coming up right now. This is why it's the big shift, because it's all coming up for us to go, is this how we really want to live our lives? Is this really what we want to be a part of? Um, and it's all of those questions that we're starting to ask ourselves. You know, they call it waking up. It's that one day when you wake up and go, why do we have a statue of a guy who 
you know, believed slavery was an okay thing and owned slaves himself. And I, was like, I don't even know if this statue exists, but like, just as an example, like, oh, why are we celebrating that? That doesn't seem right. And I think part of it's because we didn't know we were celebrating, like, it's part of our culture to celebrate heroes. And that seemed like a hero. So we, you know, had a statue of that hero. And there are statues of heroes all over the world who are really not nice guys. Um, and I think it's just like one day you wake up and go, why are we doing that? <laughs> like, do we want to keep that there? Um, and it's triggering for the person that's asking that question. And it's triggering for the person that, that hasn't considered that and is like, what are you doing taking stuff down that's part of my history and part of my culture? And that seems wrong. It's like, it's like dismantling a person's house while they're living in it. They're not ready for their house to be dismantled yet. So, um, yeah, so I don't think from a, a 3D perspective, I, well, let me ask, because it's not about me. Okay, I feel like Trump feels like he has the, the feeling, it's like he feels like it's his calling to be in the position he's in and to be doing what he's doing. But from a 3D perspective, he thinks, you know, calling people names and saying, using derisive remarks, he thinks that is how he's supposed to do it. So from a 3D perspective, I don't don't think he doesn't have an awareness of what a light worker is what source is not from his 3d from his higher self but i don't feel like i feel like he's very embroiled in the the egoic and the cultural programs from how he was raised um and i know i've heard Two people say that he speaks in coded messages, and when he says this, it really means this. And, and I don't know where that information comes from, because I don't really follow that, but he's not doing it on purpose. He's just living his life, doing what he feels like he needs to do. And and the, the effect is that we are bringing up issues that we want to look at as a collective and see how we really want to move forward. So I hope that helps.